In the underground world of motorcycle clubs, the Hells Angels stand as an enigmatic force, shrouded in mystery and often surrounded by misconceptions. Beyond their notorious reputation for rebellion and a fiercely guarded code of silence, lies a set of rules that govern the conduct and operations within their brotherhood. These rules, hidden from the public eye, reveal a fascinating and often shocking glimpse into the inner workings of this infamous organization. Let's reveal 15 shocking Hell's Angels rules that are mandatory. One of the first requirements to join the club is that you must be a guy. This means that women are not allowed to become official members. That being said, this doesn't mean that women can't take part in any of the club's events. For instance, the club lets women who are known as old ladies hang out in the hall. This usually includes the wives or lovers of club members. They can even wear patches with the number 81 on them. In the club, this is called Support 81 or Route 81, since 8 and 1 stand for the letters H and A, respectively. Still, they aren't allowed to go to clubhouse meetings. There are some rules about who can join the Hells Angels. Women are not allowed, but not any guy can join. There are some strict rules before you can join the Hells Angels. This brings up another rule that all Hells Angels members must follow. They must have a motorcycle and a legal driver's license. That being said, not just any motorbike is allowed in the Hells Angels. Only bikes made in the United States are allowed for members to ride, especially well-known brands like Harley-Davidson. Each person has a special place in their heart for the Harley, both because it was made in America and because of its unique loud rumble. People in the Hells Angels motorbike parade are known for riding American brands like Indian and Victory, which are also legal. The third important rule is that you have to get approval from all current Hells Angels members before you can join. This is another strange but necessary rule. If you really want to join the Hells Angels, you might want to think again. A prospect is a new person who wants to become a full member of the club. They need a vote from every member of the club right now. So, prospects are required to visit each charter in the state or region of the sponsoring charter and officially present themselves to the club's full patch members. Prospects will stay prospects for as long as it takes, which could be years, if they can't get the full vote of every full patch member. The next rule that everyone must follow in Hell's Angels is that people who have abused children or who have tried to be police officers or jail guards are not allowed to join. As a brotherhood, the Hell's Angels can't have anyone who has already sworn allegiance to another cause or group. Because of its code of silence, the club does not let police officers, jail guards, or people who have applied in any way in. A number of law enforcement agencies have called the Hell's Angels an organized crime group, so having a police officer as a patch-wearing member would mean that the club's business could be looked at by the police, which goes against the club's code of silence. If you want to join a motorbike club, it makes sense that you like bikes or already have one. The fifth rule that all Hells Angels must follow is shocking and must be followed. It says that the patches and vests that members wear are holy to the biker club. This is also known as the full patch. These four pieces of gear are the Death Head logo, two rockers, and the MC patch in the shape of a rectangle below the Death's Head's wings. Because the club has a strict dress code, members must wear these patches whenever they are together. It's important to remember, though, that unless you're a Hell's Angel, this style of dress is illegal and highly branded. These patches can only be worn by people who have been members of the club for a long time. If you ever thought that wearing these patches would make you feel like you fit, you should get rid of that thought right away. People who are actually members will punish you violently if they catch you wearing these patches without permission. In the Hell's Angels, Another rule that must be followed is that club patches must be returned to the club when a member leaves or dies. Because the patches belong to the Hells Angels Biker Club, this is how it works. If a person quits the club badly, they may have to hand back their patches and get rid of tattoos that show they are a member. As a possibility, J. Anthony Jaybird, a former special agent with the ATF, says that messing with a member's patch can lead to bad things. You can't touch or slap a Hell's Angel on the back or touch their patch. I did those things wrong and got in trouble for it, sometimes even getting hit. Investigative reporter Julian Scher says that the Hell's Angel's vest is so holy that anything done to it can be seen as a sin. If a member gets jailed, for example, 
They have to give their coat to one of their brothers to take care of and not let a non-member touch it. As John Jordan, a medical officer at the SMDC Health Systems Manager says, everyone needs to learn how to care for a Hells Angels member in an emergency or accident. It is against the rules for them to cut through a patch to get to an injury. This is also a very important thing when an Hells Angels decides to leave the club. If you leave the Angels for any reason, you have to return all the gear and patches. According to some sources, their tattoos are also surgically removed by another member. In other words, if you leave the Hells Angels, all the ties with the motorcycle club must be broken. Jay Dobins, who infiltrated the Hells Angels and stayed there from 2001 to 2003, also talked about the strict but necessary rule that said prospects and fully patched members couldn't talk to each other. It was stressed that if you saw a Hells Angel while wearing sunglasses, you had to take them off and look the person straight in the eyes. The members thought this move was important because they wanted to see the prospect's eyes. Hells Angels also made it clear that people who were wearing riding gloves should take them off before shaking hands with them. The undercover agent also revealed more about the infamous Outlaw Biker Club and their strange but strict rules about sexual relationships. It was against the rules for members to have any kind of sexual contact with the partners, wives, or lovers of other members. When this rule was broken, it often led to more and more physical fights. There was a hierarchy in the gang, and old ladies were the wives or lovers of members who were not allowed to be with other members. Someone was strongly warned not to get caught trying to do anything wrong with a member's spouse or partner, because they would be severely and violently punished. It is a rule of the Hell's Angels that members must always look out for each other. The story of Joseph Lancia, head of the RHS Island chapter of the Hell's Angels, shows this. He risked a longer prison sentence to protect his members at the Cadillac Lounge. The Hell's Angels expect their members to stick together, even when things get violent and bloody. The story of Meredith Curley Hunter Jr. shows this. He was stabbed after pulling out a gun to shoot bikers at the 1969 Altamont Free Concert. But these rules aren't just about protecting each other. The Hells Angels and the Banditos gang in Switzerland got into a fight in Belp, southeast of Bern, in May 2019 that went to court. The fight began when the Banditos gang tried to open a charter in Switzerland. The Hells Angels saw this as an insult and attacked them. The Swiss police had to step in and take a number of weapons, such as six guns, an assault rifle, knives, machetes, baseball bats, pepper spray, and tasers. There were many injuries in the fight, which led to the case going to court. Twenty-two people from different gangs were also accused of taking part in the fight. The Hells Angels and the Banditos had to travel from different parts of Switzerland and other countries to get to Baron in time to see the trial. Even outside the building, emotions between the two gangs were still high, and stones and bottles were thrown in a small fight. The Swiss police had to use water guns and rubber bullets to break up the fight between the two groups. Based on the trial, one suspect got eight years in prison for planning to kill someone, another got 42 years for trying to hurt someone seriously, and a third got eight months for fighting. Also, 19 bikers were tried for fighting and helping the criminals, some were found not guilty, while others were found guilty and given 10-month prison terms that were halted. This fight got a lot of attention in Switzerland, but there was another interesting thing about the event and the trial that followed. Members of the Hells Angels, who are known for having a strict code of silence, refused to say anything about the fight during the hearing. The club takes its duty to protect its members, past and present, very seriously, and they only speak out when they have to. Another important mandatory rule that all Hells Angels members must follow is that they are not allowed to talk to the media. People know that the Hells Angels Biker Club is extremely hard to get into, mostly because they have a code of silence. This code keeps the club's secrets and protection safe. Because of this, members aren't allowed to talk about the club with the media, so information could get out and be used against them. In his book, Sonny Barger, the most famous Hells Angels member, says that the club has rules and codes that will never be made public. So, it shouldn't have been a surprise that the Hells Angels didn't say anything about the fight or give an account for what they did. A similar thing happened at the Hells Angels yearly summer meeting in Carleton, Minnesota, where about 500 members were present. 
Even though they were getting press coverage, the members always turned their backs on reporters or cut off talks abruptly when they realized who they were talking to. This strict commitment to secrecy leads to yet another strange rule that all members must follow to the letter. Being a spy or snitch is something that the Hell's Angels hate very much. It's at the top of their list of things and people they hate. In particular, this is the main reason why police officers are not allowed to join the gang. If a member betrays the club or their brothers, they will have to deal with harsh punishments. An ATF agent named Jay Dobins went underground to join the Hells Angels as part of a plan called Operation Black Biscuit. This is a great example of this. My name is Jay Dobbins and I'm a former government agent who worked as a spy for the Hells Angels for almost two years. As a secret agent, I went by the name Jay Davis, but the gang members called me Jaybird. I told them I was a gun runner and a debt collector, which helped me get into the Mesa, Arizona charter of the Hells Angels. The members of the gang welcomed me because I had the right personality, attitude, and looks for the job. To gain their trust even more, I faked the death of a member of the Mongols, a rival biker gang. The Hells Angels were pleased when I showed them pictures and videos of another police officer pretending to be a dead Mongol member who was buried in a poor grave and covered in blood and brains from a lamb. I even sent them a bloody Mongol patch as a sign of my devotion. But in 2004, the case ended and everyone found out whom I really was. The Hells Angels did not take this treachery lightly, which was a bad thing. They trusted me and thought of me as one of them. Not long after I quit the gang, I started getting violent and death threats, most of which were aimed at my family. In the first case, the Hells Angels put pictures on their website that were described as Arizona rats. One of these pictures was of Dobbins, and it came with a message saying that they hoped everything was okay. But these pictures and texts had threats in them, so Dobbins and his family had to leave Arizona for a while. In 2005, they had to move again because Dobbins found out that the Hell's Angels had made a deal with the Aryan Brotherhood to kill him. After that, in August 2008, after the ATF made public the address of his home in Tucson, it was tragically burned down in the middle of the night. Luckily, Dobbins' wife and children were able to get away with only minor injuries from breathing in smoke. Regardless, the fire destroyed their home and most of their belongings. In addition, Dobbins said that the Hell's Angels and their friends planned to give him an HIV injection, take his wife and daughter, and kill them all. When asked about the extreme violence that Hell's Angels members use, especially against spies, Dobbins said that these threats were taken very seriously. Members of the outlaw biker gang may not have college degrees, but they know a lot about how to use violence and fear to get what they want. It's an important part of their dangerous way of life. Dobbins stressed how dangerous these people are by saying that they are men who live on the edge and are constantly surrounded by violence. This news doesn't come as a surprise because Sonny Barger wrote in his book Hell's Angels that spies are looked down upon by the group. Barger says that most spies are cocky jerks who enjoy being in charge and talking tough, but when the club's full power hits them, they quickly run away and swear their unwavering loyalty. Barger also said that these people would not think twice about betraying their claimed loyalty if they were in trouble. In the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club, it's normal for people to abandon their own brothers in order to protect themselves. The club's code of honor stresses loyalty and unity, which makes a rat the worst enemy. Members of the Hells Angels are not allowed to be affiliated with any other riding groups. This is a rule that all members must follow. Once a person joins the Hells Angels, they can't be loyal to any other club. The Hells Angels are famous for their constant rivalry with other biker clubs, even though they are sometimes called a social group. It makes us sad to think that we have turned into the people we used to fight against. This thought was put forward in a meeting when I chose to leave. In the past, we would work together with other clubs along the coast. But by 2011, we were in fights with every big illegal bike club in the US, as well as with police. At this point, some people lost sight of why they were living the criminal life in the first place. One group started to fight against another, making it look like a military mission. These were the exact words that George Christie, a former leader of the Hells Angels, used. He had to quit the club after 40 years because of the rising violence, because they have a history of competition with the Mongols, 
the Bandidos, and almost every other biker gang. It is easy to see why the Hell's Angels make it so hard for their members to join other groups. The Hell's Angels are not allowed to join the American Motorcyclist Association because this rule is so strict. Get ready for more rules if you thought these were the only ones. On Monday, 49 people who are accused of being part of a criminal gang linked to the Hell's Angels went on trial at Spain's highest court. The last time police cracked down on the group was on July 23, 2013, on the vacation island of Menorca. This important event happened almost 10 years later, and during that time Frank Hainbooth was caught. He was a well-known Hell's Angels member and led the MCA branch. Along with other suspects, Hanbooth was accused of running a criminal ring that did illegal prostitution, money laundering, and drug dealing. There was a famous German outlaw biker and professional boxer named Frank Armin Hanbooth, who was seen as the leader of the Hell's Angels in Europe. Hainbooth was in charge of the Hell's Angels handover charter, which was known as Germany's richest and most important charter. Hainbooth moved to MCA in Spain after his home was searched by police because they thought he had ordered several contract killings. He took over as head of the local Hell's Angels group and stayed out of trouble until he was caught in 2013. After he was arrested, he was accused of making money off of prostitution and forcing women to work in houses owned by Hell's Angels. He could get a long jail term if he is found guilty. The government wants Frank Hainbooth, a German who used to be the leader of the Hell's Angels, to spend up to 13 years in jail and pay a 4.56 million fine. Hainbooth's participation in drug trafficking made the Hell's Angels' already bad image even worse in the eyes of the law. His arrest and trial also go against a holy rule that everyone in the group has to follow. Given their tough appearance, it may come as a surprise that the Hell's Angels Biker Club doesn't allow its members to use intravenous drugs. The club puts a lot of value on loyalty because they think that drug addiction can make it hard for members to put the club first. Members can smoke cigarettes or weed and drink, but they are not allowed to spike drinks or use hard drugs. It's important to remember that not all Hell's Angels are drug users. In fact, a lot of them put their health and fitness first. Even though they have a bad image, the club really cares about order and discipline. As a result, another important Hell's Angels rule says that all members must always show up to club events and meetings. Becoming a member of the Hell's Angels takes years of hard work and is a strong way to show your support for the club. One of the best ways to show this loyalty is to always show up to meetings and answer calls right away. Everyone in the club is expected to show up to every meeting, which is sometimes called church or the clubhouse. In the same way, they can't miss club events because that would show a lack of dedication and respect. The Hells Angels Club puts a lot of value on their meetings because, according to their code of silence, everything said in the clubhouse is kept secret. Members are also expected to go to church every week and take part in group processions and other events connected to the club. Because they are so dedicated to the club, many Hells Angels have trouble keeping full-time jobs because they are always on the road. Because the club comes first, having a full-time job can make a member less committed. Members who don't show up to a clubhouse meeting for a good reason will have to pay a fine of $1.150 to $1.100. The way they work together as a group is another example of this focus. One important rule of the Hells Angels Biker Club is that you must always ride in order. Not only does this rule show the club's order, it also makes sure that it is always followed. This group of Hells Angels is led by a president, vice president, secretary or manager, sergeant at arms, and road captain. Because of this, the leader or president of a charter is always at the front of any parade, even if it puts him in the most danger. The vice president, the road captain, and the sergeant at arms are in line after the president. Prospect features, on the other hand, tend to be near the bottom of the list. In case of an accident or pull, this structure keeps things in order and makes sure that no brother is left behind. Also, if one of them is pulled over by the cops, the whole pack stops, no matter how many people are in it. This ride order also keeps people from trying to get in the way of the pack. Because of this, if you ever see a group of Hell's Angels, you should stay behind them. There is a chance that you could get hurt if you try to get into the group and break it up. As shocking as it is final, the Hell's Angels' most important rule is that once you join, you are bound for life. Basically, 
This means that a Hells Angels member can't leave the club, not even after they die. The process of entering the Hells Angels can be very difficult, but this is on purpose so that the club can find the most dedicated people. That being said, if you think joining the Hells Angels is like joining a casual social group that you can leave at any time, you're wrong. As a Hells Angel, you have to be sure that you want to be there for a long time because you can't leave or quit. Membership is supposed to last a person's whole life, unless they die or leave the club for certain reasons. Though a person dies, it does not mean the end for them. Instead, their brothers get together to honor the dead, and they often plan a very formal and serious funeral parade. People who are still members of the Hells Angels can only leave the group if they are in major legal trouble or are kicked out for breaking the membership rules. The story of George Christie, who used to be the leader of the Hells Angels Charter in Ventura, California, is a great example of this. Christie had to cut ties with the club because he was in trouble with the law after leading it for about 40 years. Among the charges against him were planning to kill the leader of the Mexican Mafia jail gang for money. He was found not guilty of this charge in 1987, but he was later arrested again for his part in setting fire to competing tattoo shops four years earlier. Christie was locked up for about a year before he was released in 2011. He says that all of these things happened because the Hells Angels are angry at almost every other biker gang. It was because of this knowledge that he decided to quit the club. Later that same year, he said he had officially quit the club, following the proper steps of telling everyone in a meeting, taking off his patch, and leaving. But Christie didn't know that there wasn't an official way to leave the Hells Angels, and he had to deal with the effects of his acts just a few weeks later. He learned that he was apparently out bad and no longer had a good reputation in the club that had been his home for most of his life. Because of this, he was shunned by the outlaw biker community and couldn't interact with other members. Any efforts to talk to him put the membership of those involved at risk. It got so bad that reports started spreading that he had turned into a government spy, which is against the law. Christie wasn't kidding when the Hells Angels told her she had to leave the club, which was the worst sentence they could give. He said in an interview that it was hard to take because he had spent most of his life in the club and didn't have many friends outside of it. But there are a few people, like David Labrava, who have left the Hells Angels without any problems. He is one of the few people who is known to have left the club on good terms. Because he used to be a part of the Oakland chapter, he was hired as a technical advisor for the show to make sure it showed an outlaw biker club more accurately. In 2019, he posted on Instagram that he was leaving the Hells Angels, even though he was given a part to play. Labravo said he quit the club on his own, and in good standing, and he now sees himself as a normal person. Even though the Hells Angels are organized like a combat group, they have rules to keep the club running smoothly.